Well, last week we did something that we thought was impossible, and we all know how that adventure went. So this week, Luke and I decided to go all the way back to Halo Combat Evolved and see once and for all, is it possible to complete the Warthog run without getting in a vehicle? Now, of course, we were pretty successful with how far we were able to get in the Halo 3 Warthog run. However, looking at Halo Combat Evolved with the different mechanics the game has and the very different type of Warthog run we're facing here, there's three main challenges that obviously we would have to face jumping into this behemoth of a task. First, we would have to prepare for the obvious obstacles and enemies we would have to face. Next, we're going to have to find a way to maneuver around the jumps and ramps that are throughout this course. And finally, we're going to have to deal with that dang timer that is constantly counting down. Now, of course, despite what the Halo lore says, Master Chief is extremely slow in Halo Combat Evolved, and there's really no no way to get around the fact that having six minutes to do this entire Warthog run is pretty much an impossible task for Master Chief, even though it's only two kilometers. Can you actually complete the run on foot, every single part of it? So of course Halo Combat Evolved does not have rally points, so we have to play through the entire level of the Maw just to get to the actual Warthog run part. Once we got into the actual Warthog area, we ran into the first problem right away that could have easily killed this entire run, but if you go to the very first hill after pulling out of the Warthog garage, the hill's actually too steep to run up on foot. Now of course you can manipulate this with grenade jumping, but this made us realize we probably need to be more more prepared for grenade jumps moving forward if we're going to make this run happen. So we ended up resetting the entire game, turning on the boom skull, and then playing through the entire last level again just to get back to the Warthog garage. Next, we ran into another minor problem, which is always fun to deal with. Now that we have the boom skull activated, explosions are more deadly. So a lot of the times we just got killed by things exploding while trying to run through the garage. But once we finally survived the garage and got out of it, we were able to run up the hill and do a grenade jump, which would give us enough of a boost to make it up the incline that is way too steep to make without being in a warthog. From there, either Luke or I would kill ourselves and teleport to the person who did the grenade jump. In Halo 1, if you do a grenade jump, especially with the boom skull on, you're going to lose some of your health besides just some of your shields, which means later on, if you try to do another grenade jump, you might not actually survive the explosion. So that's something we had to constantly keep in mind when we were doing this run because we had to make sure we had full health so that if we ever had to do either a large drop or do a specific grenade jump, we would be able to have the maximum health available. However, once we got a hang of doing the grenade jumps and getting up the ramps, it actually was relatively easy and with the right communication, we were able to make sure that we constantly were running with grenades and full health. Then we made it to the big open section and we kind of just ran through it. Chief is pretty slow and there's some enemies along the way, but they're nothing that we couldn't handle and of course just running it on foot and taking it a lot slower is definitely a different experience than when you're driving and crashing into everything along the way because we can't drive well in Halo 1 whatsoever but we were pretty aware that the clock was ticking and there really wouldn't be any way Chief could run this whole thing on foot he's just a little bit too slow so by the time we got to this section we realized it's probably in our best interest to either reset or utilize a warthog to get a checkpoint so we can continue to see how far Chief can get on foot and wipe away the timer. So yes, we know it is impossible to complete the Maw on Halo 1 with the timer going, but we're really here trying to test if it's possible to physically complete the course rather than complete it within the six minute time frame. And honestly, at this point, it was the least of our worries because the biggest problem that we were going to face is the big Warthog jump that's just slightly after Fohammer crashes the Pelican. Honestly, we knew this section going into it would probably probably make or break the run because this part is hard enough to do in a warthog, let alone two clunky and heavy Spartans trying to utilize explosions to get from one end of a giant room to the other, which also made us wonder why this room even exists in the Pillar of Autumn to begin with, but I guess that's not really the point of this video. So we resorted to trying to make some grenade jumps to launch us across to that middle platform. However, every time we seemed to get over there, we would just kind of drop dead randomly. We 
weren't sure if it was either just the distance was slightly too far, which would trigger the automatic death, or if there was some kind of death barrier, or just in general, sometimes we couldn't make the jump. So we were kind of struggling with how we were going to possibly even try to get around this huge room. Then it came into mind that maybe if we could find a way out of the map, we could walk over the entire section and skip the ramp altogether. So then we went back to one of the open areas, climbed up and killed some flood, and grenade jumped onto an upper bridge, and then tried grenade jumping outside of the map from the high bridge. It did get us outside of the map, and the skybox is really wonky when you're on old graphics. New graphics, not so much. So we were happy to find out that one theory somewhat worked. However, unfortunately, the way that Halo Combat Evolved loads each section of the Warthog run, we weren't able to move anywhere past the open area once outside of the map, which means that we would have no way to actually jump back into the map or even progress above the area where the drop-off actually occurs. We even tried traveling to where Foe Hammer crashes to see if there was any type of platform we could jump on and then maybe do a high grenade jump out of the map from there, which would get us at least closer to the ramp and maybe get around that way, but we had no luck with that either. So while we knew we were able to walk the first section of this level all the way through Foe Hammer crashing and all the way up onto this big ramp, we didn't know if it would be possible for us to get any further and we thought that this would be it. And we were proud of how far we got since we were able to get really far within the six minutes, but we would have felt a lot better had we been able to actually make it to the end, even if it took longer than six minutes. It definitely wasn't feeling like the same type of accomplishment we had with Halo 3. But then we started to look around the area surrounding the drop-off where the ramp kind of begins, and we started to notice that there was some geometry that looked like it could be something you could maybe walk up or stand on, and maybe if we utilize jumping on each other's heads or doing right timed grenade jumps, we might be able to get a better view of the area if we could jump up on the left section. So this part took a ton of trial and error. Fortunately enough, there was a checkpoint right there, so we were able to reset more or less within 30 seconds of getting to the drop-off and see if we were able to do anything, but because of the way this level works, it only gave us a short time to actually test out our theories before the Pillar of Autumn would explode and kind of wiping us, making us start over from the checkpoint. So it was a blessing and a curse at the same time. We're happy not to have to run the whole thing again, but we only had limited amount of time to try every theory that we could think of. Fortunately enough, with some well-timed jumps, I was able to get up onto the upper platform on the left side, but we still had a long way to go if we were going to somehow make our way across the entire room. Fortunately, there's some scaffoldings that run across the distance of the room, which was something that would be crucial for this entire run, as we were able to drop onto the scaffoldings and make a run across partway through the room. From there, we ran into a couple of problems where we wanted to see if there was anything we could drop down on, drop across to, or even sling ourselves onto the opposite wall. However, everything we seemed to try just didn't work. We always were just barely too high up and we would trigger the fall damage that would instantly kill you. But we fortunately found a platform kind of centered in the room that if we dropped just the right way with full health, we could actually survive the fall, then quickly reset each other to full health again and see where we could go from there. From the lower platform, there was another scaffolding, even lower, and it looked so promising because it would be a pretty obvious route as to where we could try to go from there and hopefully make our way all the way to the end of the level. However, with time constant constantly running out, it always was an issue making all of the jumps to get to this lower platform first to even test out any of the theories that we had. And we already had made a bunch of precision jumps to get there, so it was always frustrating whenever we'd run out of time or die on certain jumps because we would usually have to reset the whole thing again. Fortunately enough though, while we were testing out the drop to the next section of the scaffolding, which always seemed to just kill us every time we dropped, we finally had a moment where we both both accidentally drop down at the same time, causing one of us to die first and spawning on the other person right before they died, which let us stand on the scaffolding. Now, the whole spawning thing was pretty much just a luck thing that happened and not something we were expecting ourselves to be able to ever recreate again. It was just some random timing, but it did prove to us that we could stand on the scaffolding and there wasn't an insta-kill barrier down there that would wipe us if we did find a legitimate way 
down there. We didn't really have too much time being down there as we were running out of time, so what we ended up doing was just resetting and going there again. This time though, knowing that there is a chance we could survive that drop without it killing us if we can just get around the fall damage, I decided to try to jump just slightly to the right of the main piece we had been landing on to see if I could get just enough of a slide to prevent me from hitting that death wall whenever we got too much speed from falling. And sure enough, with enough tries, we actually made it onto that lower scaffolding, which we never thought we could get there in the first place. And mind you, it was hard enough just getting to the scaffolding every time because of time being limited, grenade jumps being wonky, and just in general, the geometry and platforming in Halo 1's way harder than any other Halo game. From there, we had to pay a lot of attention to where all the platforms landed and what we were capable of making with fall damage, making sure we were paying attention to our health. But fortunately enough, we were able to make a couple of jumps to land on the next platform, which would end the giant jump of the Warthog Room, which meant the hardest jump in all of Halo 1 for a Warthog to make was completed without being in a Warthog. And we don't know if very many other people have even tried this technique and have crossed this room this bizarre way that we actually figured out. So now knowing that we could complete this room, Room, even though we clearly didn't have enough time to run all the way to the final stretch of the level, we did know that technically it would be possible maybe to complete this whole level on foot using our Warthog checkpoint strategy. So with the theory that you could complete this level on foot, we decided to put it to the test and see how much time Master Chief would have needed on the clock had he not been able to drive a Warthog because maybe he didn't have his driver's lesson, failed driver's ed. We don't know what Chief does. So we started again from the beginning, timing out our runs and just getting a ballpark idea as to how much time Chief would need. We split the level into three sections sections, the whole entire first section leading up to the Warthog jump, the second section being the Warthog jump itself, and then the final stretch to the escape ship at the end of the hangar. After we completed each section, we would then reset to last checkpoint, starting back again in the Warthog garage, drive a Warthog to the beginning of the next section, complete that section on foot, reset back to the beginning of the garage, drive through the first two sections in the vehicle, and then running through the final section on foot once again, proving that yes, you can complete the entire Ma Warthog run on foot if you had more time. Of course, the timer was the biggest issue. We knew there'd be no way to get around it from the time we started this, and we estimate that if you were to complete this in a perfect run without having a timer going, ultimately we estimated that you would need maybe around 12 to 12 and a half minutes if you were actually going to run this on foot, and it's kind of interesting to see that this this could be something possibly done. I just wish that that timer was not there after all. And either way, at the end of the day, while we couldn't beat the timer, we still were really proud that we were able to beat every section of the run on foot. And not even some stupidly large gap, which we still don't know why it's in the ship in the beginning, could stop the chief from escaping. He just was only stopped by his terrible cardio. Well, there we go. We now know that in some way or another with a little bit of letting some things slide here and there, you can complete the Warthog run in Halo Combat Evolved The Maw. And this is something that we're really proud of on top of how far we were able to get in the Halo 3 run. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And it's just paving the way for the real challenge that we're getting ready to face in an upcoming video, which I hope you guys tune in for. If you guys wanna see what we're doing next with this same concept, be sure to subscribe with notifications on because you're not going to want to miss what we come out with next. Also, if you want to interact with us more, make sure you get notifications when we put videos out and just be a part of our community. Make sure you check out our Discord link in the description. We have a ton of Halo related stuff over on our Discord. We also talk about Destiny and with Halo coming out on PC, there's going to be a ton of new players jumping on. We're going to want to do custom game nights and stuff like that. So make sure you guys don't miss out on that opportunity. So we'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys. 